Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Candace, and I post lots of different gardening videos. My husband and I just purchased our home this past spring uh, 2020, and we are in the process of making all of our raised vegetable beds and putting in a cut flower garden. So in today's video, I am going to be pre-sprouting my ranunculus. I am going to be showing you what I do to soak them and to pre-sprout them. I have here a couple bags of ranunculus corms that I bought from Lowe's, and then I have a couple bags that I bought from Eden Brothers. I have the bridal bouquet mix, the romantic mix, and then a just regular mix. I can't wait to get these guys growing. They're so beautiful, and they're really good for cut flowers. So if you're interested in seeing how I pre-sprout my ranunculus, then stay tuned. So don't mind the mess. We are out here in my garage right now. Um, but I wanted to show you my materials really quick and what I'm going to do to... Uh, soak them. Right. I have these containers here filled with uh, just regular tap water and I've let them set to make sure they are room temperature and then I'm just going to put each type in a container. So you know this type I will put in one container and I will label it so that I know which is which. This is a big bag. It's a 2.2 cubic feet of compressed peat moss and I use this, and then I use these compressed bricks of cocoa coir, and this is what it will look like, and I use 50% this, 50% of the peat moss. Now, I do sift the peat moss because you will have lots of large chunks, if not, which actually is probably okay for the ranunculus, but I also do this for my seed starting and so that's what I do. I sift it using just a regular food strainer. And then I will just take either like a one gallon bucket or something like that. And I will get a bucket of each, mix them together, and then just keep repeating that if I need more. Now down here, I already have some peat moss that I sifted. And then I added a little bit of perlite. And then I went ahead and moistened it and mixed it together really good. Now I will just have to add this and the cocoa coir together and mix it up really good and then I can put it in the seed tray. I still need to um, sterilize it uh, but this is what I'm going to use. It's just the bottom of a 72 cell seed tray. It's called a 1020. Uh, you can get them in bulk online if you have a lot of things to start which is what I did this year since I'm putting in this cut flower garden. I needed a lot of them. And I forgot to mention that I will also add this just a little layer on the very top. Uh, this holds moisture a little bit better than just having the peat moss and cocoa coir. Uh, that way you don't have to mist them or bottom water them as much. And have these soaking while I am mixing up the cocoa coir and peat moss. And you can use regular seed starting mix. Um, I've used Jiffy mix, seed starting mix for many years, and I, I love that stuff. Uh, they sift it very well, and it has a good amount of perlite and vermiculite in it. Um, but I just find that it's a lot cheaper to mix my own. Now, because I'm going to be having these in these trays for quite some time, I am going to add a little bit of fertilizer. Uh, these are two options that I have on hand. Anything like garden tone, plant tone, bulb tone, really any of those are good options. Uh, some of them just have ingredients that are, you know, more geared towards that specific thing. But any kind of organic slow release fertilizer um, is really going to be a good option. Uh, basically, an organic uh, slow release fertilizer is something that's going to stay in your either uh you know, seed starting mix or, you know, your compost or whatever you're adding it to, it's going to stay in there for a lot longer as you're watering it. Some of it, you know, will leach out, but for the most part, it's going to feed your plants slowly, you know, over time. Um, a synthetic water soluble fertilizer is going to dis dissolve in the water. It's going to dissolve in your uh, seed starting mix. Your plants are going to, you know, uptake it and then they're going to use it and it's going to be gone. So that's something you're going to have to constantly, you know, reapply uh, in order to feed your plants. 
Uh, and then the other one that I have here is Trifecta Plus. I got this from Emma Gardner. Uh, this is a little bit stronger of a fertilizer, but it's still pretty low numbers. Um, it's a 5-10-4. Um, but like I said, both of these are good. Any organic fertilizer is really going to be good. Um, and I usually do about a half a half dose. So if, you know, if this says to use three teaspoons per planting hole, then I would do, you know, one and a half. Um, sometimes they say per square feet. Sometimes they say per plant. Um, you just have to look at what that says. But I always do half strength because these are, well, these aren't seedlings, uh, but they are, you know, very small plants that are just beginning to begin to grow. All right, so after you have these covered up with soil and vermiculite, what you're going to want to do is put them somewhere that is going to be between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 14 days until you start to see some little roots. You're going to want to keep checking on them every possibly every day to make sure that they are moist enough you may have to miss them and then every couple days you can check for those little little white roots and once you see those at that point you can depending on your temperatures depending on what time of the year you're starting them plant them outside or you can pot them up and begin uh, growing them under grow lights inside ranunculus prefer cooler weather to get established but they cannot take freezing temperatures. Anything under 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they cannot take that. So you definitely want to keep them above 32 degrees. Uh, and, and once they get, um, you know, more mature and it comes closer to that time to bloom, uh, they really like to be in a very full sun location. Uh, they don't like to get too hot, uh, but they do like that full sun. I am in zone 6B and I am starting these in January. So I still have quite a while before I'll be able to plant them outside because I don't have any sort of greenhouse or, you know, heated anything like that. So I am going to wait till I see the roots and I know that they are good. I plan to take them and basically separate them, uh, give them more space, probably about three inches apart, giving them a lot more room. And I will put them in my grow room under the grow lights. I will probably have to grow them on for about six weeks. Uh, and then at that point, my daytime temperatures are going to be around 50 degrees on average. And my nighttime temperatures are going to be around 35 to 40. Now, at that point, I will still have some nights that dip below freezing. And on those nights, I will just go out and put some frost cover, frost blankets on them. Uh, you can even use sheets, uh, one or two layer of sheets. Uh, and that will give them a couple extra, you know, degrees warmer. And that way, you know, they won't get killed by that frost. Since I'm growing these four cut flowers, I am going to space mine about six to nine inches apart. But if you're growing these in the landscape, you can plant these between a foot and a foot and a half apart. But other than that, I think that is all the tips that I have for you. Make sure and like the video if you did enjoy it. And if you haven't already, I would love if you would subscribe, turn on notifications so that you can stay up to date and see these ranunculus whenever they bloom. Hopefully they are going to be beautiful and robust plants here in just a few months. But this is all for today's video and I will talk to you in the next one.